Hello, hottie. <laughs> hey, it's Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. And the topic for this podcast is obvious, but I also want to give you a uh, maybe a trailer at the beginning and let you know if you're not a fan of sauna and you really have no interest at all in it, this may not be your podcast. So you may want to hop off. And I will tell you that with the company that I'm sharing a product about, I do make an affiliate commission while you save this time on shipping, if it feels like a good fit for you. And, and I only share things that I share with my family. In fact, two out of three of my siblings actually have a sauna. And, uh, well, three out of four of us, I guess you could say it like that because I do too and started the whole thing. But what I want to do right now is just tell you why I'm talking about sauna right now. And I've made this episode personal because it actually is. I am in a hot seat right now and I don't recall asking to be like asking to get help, but I need it because my hormones are misbehaving. The supply demand issues that we've witnessed all of us in some way or another, I know through the pandemic has struck again. And this time related to hormones. So literally I do hormone replacement and the type of estrogen that I was taking was no longer available. So they delayed, you know, a couple of, a couple of opportunities for appointments and said, we're going to push it back again. We can't get a hold of it. We're going to push it back. And then when they did get some in, they said, we've gone a different route because we cannot get the kind that you were on. No one has it. And so they chose a new one and I reluctantly went ahead and did it on schedule. And I say reluctantly because <laughs> I am that one, the one of a hundred people who might be extra sensitive and will react. It was this way when I, when I first uh, went on the pill, and yes, I was on the pill, so who knew that was not a good idea way back when, but I was so irregularly regular or regularly irregular, I guess, but it became, became a concern for me when I was then sexually active. It was like, oh no, all the time. And so I went on oral birth control to help mitigate that and regulate things two months I bled straight through. So too much information maybe, but you get the idea that it just took a really long time for them to find which one do I want, which one do I need, which one don't I need, and for them to get the right cocktail in regard to now fast forwarding to a menopause. So once we had it right, I was on this smooth sailing, like feeling great, feeling like I looked as great as I wanted to. So I'm not meaning to compliment myself by feeling and looking great, but that's kind of where I was. It was just like, I'm good. Like, this is great. Anything else is up to me, lifestyle habits. And, you know, I'm not going to blame it on taking something if I'm, you know, having a cup more coffee a day than I should or something similar. And it's actually not coffee for me, but totally diversion. But this is why I'm sharing about the sauna to come back to it. And I'll explain here. Literally, I swear by my infrared sauna. In fact, it's recently that my hormones are off due to that supply chain issue resulting in a change of the type of estrogen that I was given. Skin breakouts and water retention are the worst, the absolute worst. I use my solo sauna and I'll link to that for 14 days in a row. And I'm actually into um, about day day seven. So tonight I've got to do it again um, in a row. And so far I've gotten a lot of relief. I mean, literally day one, it helped because I sweat buckets. Now, 
I haven't been in the sauna since I moved. So many of you know, I moved in uh, late April. We were packing up early May. So probably the last week of April, I had boxed it up already before we actually moved. And the heat of the summer, I got to say, when it's triple digits, the last thing I want to do really is get inside. And I have been getting outdoors, either trying to go for a walk when it's not super hot yet, or get outside and go to the pool. So I've experienced the heat. I don't actually, I'm not driven to want to get in that sauna again when it's so warm. But if I were inside and really restricted or in cold air conditioning, like in an office or, you know, as a trainer in gyms quite often, that's what you do want to do because you're cold (laughs) because the gym is cooled enough for those people who are exercising that if you are a trainer and you're there doing session after session all day and you are not working out, you're cold by the end of the day. And I, no lies, (laughs) I would probably use it in that case because you can't wait to get warmed up. You really look forward to it. But um, saunas are gold for so many reasons. And for more on what exactly they do, I wanted to share this podcast with you. And there have been other episodes, but I'm sharing this with you so that you know there's also free shipping this month. So if you've been thinking about it or some of these benefits actually like say to you, yes, please, right? It may be something that you want to reconsider. And the other reason I share it is simply because access has become easier. I mean, there are like you and I, maybe, maybe I speak for myself, but I, you know, knew a tanning bed when I was a, you know, freshman, sophomore, probably junior. And I stopped, you know, as a senior and in grad school or tried to restrict it because I could tell what it was doing to my skin already. But, you know, there are infrared sauna places now in memberships, like there were tanning beds businesses back in the day. So it's accessible whether you do it in home or not. And I think making the distinguishing factors between say steam and sauna is important. So I'm going to rapid fire through some of these benefits of sauna that I love. And look, I've been a sauna sauna fan since high school when I was first introduced to it by either one of my older siblings or their spouses. I can't remember which. And in high school, you know, heck, you're just motivated by what feels good. You know, I loved the heat and the sweat, especially on a cold day. And I loved the way my skin looked and felt after. So little did I know I would need all of these benefits. And here they are. Improves insulin sensitivity. So my midlife girlfriend, pay attention, we tend to have more insulin resistance in midlife. It burns calories. It's through the heat regulation that you're doing. You're sweating. Your body is working harder to turn on the AC, basically. Improves your heart rate variability. Now, I wrote about what this is um, as far as it's a measure of recovery. I talked about it in You Still Got It, Girl. And at that point, measuring that was actually more cumbersome. It's like you put a monitor on first thing in the morning, laid back down, turn on the app. Now we've got aura rings and we've got your Garmin is telling you if you are or not. There's increased resilience of your cells to stressors. So in case you haven't put two and two together, you know, stress is responsible for disease. That's a really good thing because you're going to be less susceptible and more just resilient overall, not just you mentally, but literally your physical body. It increases autophagy and that's like benefiting from fasting without fasting. (laughs) So imagine coupling the two if you were doing some fasting and during that period of time, you're also, and I don't mean while you're fasted or whether you're fed, just mean if lifestyle habits, you do some intermittent fasting and you are somebody who's honest, that could be a powerful duo. Provides a cardio-like stimulus. Now, I'm not telling you you don't have to do cardio, but I can tell you if you can't, it does provide a cardio-like stimulus for the heart. And 
uh, yeah, you're not off the hook. It increases brain-derived neurotropic factor. So it's known as BDNF, all good things for brain function, cognition, and uh, we don't want to lose those. Reasons to use infrared sauna specifically. So the other things that I mentioned might also apply to say sauna, but infrared specifically heats deep in your tissues. It's heating you from the inside out, not like the sun beating down on you at the beach, which may feel lovely, but this kind of heat is starting inside at the cellular level. So it's also not like a steam room because that's from the outside in. It helps to eliminate toxins far more than just sitting in a steam and sweating. We store toxins in our bodies. And I say this to we as in midlife women, we store toxins in our bodies, especially in our fat, making it hard to lose fat. So this release supports the release of fat. Exposure to consumption of heavy metals, PPCs, phthalates, flame retardants, pesticides, for example, we really can't avoid them. I mean, if you've ever used an Uber, it, the upholstery in the car, and they've got a dangling evergreen aromatherapy scent that is not essential oil, I can promise you that. You know, and who used to, who didn't? used to. Maybe go to Bath and Body Works, not to throw them under the bus and get scented candles. Anything that says scented is, unless it's with essential oils, is not your friend. So it also boosts nitric oxide. You're going to hear a lot more about this. It's something that dilates blood vessels, and that's a good thing. Sauna also provides rest and relaxation. So while you're in the sauna, now this is true for me and maybe not you, but when I warm up, I get sleepy. And, you know, when I go in the sauna, if I need to, and I lay down, I take literally, if I'm in there for 30 minutes, which is usually my goal, 30, I'm not to 40 yet. Um, cause I haven't built myself back up to it. But I can power nap for about 10 minutes and just go out hard. But in addition to that, I can get up, I'm showering, having dinner, and I'm ready for bed early and I sleep so, so well. And last but not least, it supports immune function. And I don't mean that's the last benefit, but it's the one I'm going to highlight, the less one I'm highlighting. So enough said about our interest in boosting immune function right now, right? I think we've all got that message. Here's how I use it. So just in case I've hinted at a little bit of this, I like to do about 30 or 35 minutes. Now I mentioned this, my havoc, right? All just happened uh, a little over a week ago. And I mean, I knew this was problematic probably three or four weeks ago, maybe even a month and a half ago, I knew there was a pattern here that was not good. I just didn't understand why until, ah, it's a different estrogen. Thank you very much. Right? So what happened is I needed to put my sauna together. So got that done and then started using it just immediately. But, you know, I started with 20 minutes the first time and that was enough. I mean, it was just drenched, gradually working my way up. So I'm about 30 to 35 minutes right now. When I had left off last winter, when it's cooler, really looking forward to, because I keep that house fairly cool. Um, I was probably up to 40. 45 minutes as I was doing it and just not there quite yet. But I will shoot for 30 to 35 minutes just on a regular basis. And regularly, that's three to seven days a week, depending on my schedule. And if I'm traveling, of course, that's not happening. But if I'm suffering from something like this, or I've done it before when I had road rash from a bike ride to heal faster. But similarly, it's helping heal the breakouts on my skin. Now, obviously my head is not in it. It's not in the sauna because I'm not sitting in it. I'm more in a, imagine an MRI tunnel and your head is outside of it. So if you go to the show notes, um, I will link to the solo sauna is in, it looks like it's a sleeping bag kind of with a dome on the top of it. 
but my head is not in it and you wouldn't want that to happen either. But it's still, it's regenerating throughout your body. So you're still going to be including your skin face on and skin on your face. So throwing off hormone balance throws off your fluid retention as well. And it's one of the signs that I first noticed in 2019 when I finally cried uncle and said, I cannot flip this switch alone and I'm going to look into HRT. Of all the reasons to use infrared sauna, I prefer the ones that are extra. Like I like the pampering. I would love to be just choosing that. Feels good. I like it. And not necessarily have that tangible thing, but I need it right now. And um, so this 14-day little sprint I'm on, and it's ending at 14 days, by the way, just because I'm traveling. I'm going to be going out of town, so it's it's going to put a halt to what I can do. But I started also at lower temps. So with my sauna and with almost any sauna, you're going to be able to control the dial based on, you know, like a one through uh, nine or one through 10 scale. So I started at five, you know, gradually increased to six, did fine. I'm back to seven. You know, when I left off and I was doing about 40 minutes it, with level eight or nine last uh, winter or spring, definitely not there right now because I think in part I'm not tolerating heat as well because of um, the out of whack hormones. So I make sure that before I sauna, I'm already well hydrated. Now that's a given, but to me, here's what that means. You're including sodium, you're including electrolytes. It's not just tons of water. You cannot do that. You sweat out salt and electrolytes, so you've got to be replenishing them. When I was training for the Ironman, I traveled to Cozumel for the last, gosh, I think it was the last three in a row to tell you the truth. And twice having done that, I owned my sauna. So since I live in hot, dry climates and, you know, I, I'm at not at altitude anymore. I don't have that overtraining help. You know, training here in um, hot, dry climates wasn't very helpful, right, for getting to Cozumel where it's hot and it's humid. So I would sauna after a workout, like after a bike ride, like I've done two hours, three hours, four hours, come back and sauna because you want to condition your body to be able to handle that just to stay in for 20 to 30 minutes. Definitely drinking, adding electrolytes and salt while I'm doing that. So even if you're not training for an Ironman, you, you still, um, can benefit from a sauna. So I don't want you to think, well, I have no interest in that, so I don't need it. But the still, you want that increased ability to sweat at a lower heart rate or lower body temperature. So what did that do for me? So it helped me keep my heart rate lower when I was training and competing in Cozumel than had I not done it. So, I mean, overheating is a real concern when you're in heat and humidity, but when you're uh, in heat and humidity, can, exerting yourself for up to 17 hours, it's a real thing, right? So here's what sauna can do for you. Number one, increase oxygenation and sweat, right? So why that's good. Early onset of sweat means you're able to cool yourself better. And in a humid environment, that's really important, but there there is going to be a limit it's tricky because once the air is saturated, it's not going to evaporate it on you. So if you've got 60, 70% or higher humidity, that water's not evaporating off your skin to cool you, but it's certainly helpful that you're able to sweat. There's also longevity benefits and a frequent use of sauna is associated with lower risk of dementia, hypertension, heart disease. Now, who knows? Very likely people who use sauna overall have just healthier lifestyles, right? So maybe that's part of why it lowers risk. But it's so hard to tell specifically what habit was most related. So as a 38-year fitness professional, and at that point where I was using it 13 years into 
perimenopause as an endurance athlete, it does make a difference. It made an absolute difference. So I mentioned I moved a few months ago and I just unpacked my sauna because of the need to do this for 14 days. I just committed to, I'm going to do this for as long as I can before I have to leave. It's only been four days. My skin is already calmed down. So very worth it. I'd love to hear from you. Do you sauna? Love to know the reasons you started, why you use infrared, and why possibly you might be most interested in doing it. I'm going to link to the show notes where I have links to the saunas that I have at home and that my family members have. And I'm going to link to previous episodes that I've done about sauna. So I'd love to continue the conversation with you. Please feel free to share it. And I'm going to put the show notes at flipping50.com forward slash reasons to use infrared sauna. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.